Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day here today in Apache Junction. Well, which is good because we had two days of rain and wind. It was awful. But it's cleared up and we've come here to Mickey D's to have some breakfast. Not that Mickey D's. <laughs> I'm deciding what I'm gonna get to eat. They have omelets, biscuits and gravy, egg plates, bagel, uh, pancakes, French toast, Mickey's burgers, grilled chicken smitches. What the heck is that? Can you see how I'm trying to look at my okay, fresh garden salad, soup, chili, hot subs, cold subs, and more sandwiches. Oh, those are, and these are the specials? Oh, nice. And their prices are pretty good. Yeah, they are, actually. That's funny. Sandwiches. Sandwiches. Ooh, hillbilly hash browns. Can I see if it's Tegas' This yours? Oh, yeah. And his, too. Well, you got, did you get, um, I got the same thing you get. Mmm, French toast and bacon and eggs. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I swear you sound like Jimmy. When you <laughs> well, breakfast was yummy. Love French toast. We came to Prospect Park, or Prospector's Park, to take the dogs for a little stroll. Scratchy, scratchy. You ready, Momo? You got an itch? Right, go. Seems to be like a normal city park. It does have a ball field. And a soccer field down there. I hear something, like tennis or racquetball or handball. We're just on this cement path. I think it, does it loop around the park? Okay. Seems like it splits up here. I have a playground at the far end. A, a gazebo with picnic tables and I think there's grills up there. Oh yeah. Oh, this is a circle loop right here, isn't it? Okay, and this goes, I think, all the way around. Look at the view. There's Superstition Mountain. And then someone said that that was the, not that one, but on the back side of that is the Four Peaks Mountains or something like that. Yes, definitely a beautiful day today. Feels nice. I think it's in the 70s and there's like a slight breeze, cool breeze. Yeah, it seems like they have several of these gazebos with the picnic tables and grills. Snow. Beep beep. Room. Oh, nice shade tree. More gazebos. I'm not sure what that building is. Seems like they have a bathrooms over here. Another playground area. What's this say? The little snow plow plowed the streets of mighty mountains. But it kept snowing, so he plowed the streets again. Oh, Jeff said these were handball courts. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh, wow. Hello. <laughs> Echoey. Echoey. Come on, you're always itching. What's that, huh? They also have a volleyball court over there. And basketball over there. Yeah, these are the restrooms here. Well, that looks very intricate and confusing. 
get stuck up in there. Oh, they're, uh, uh, I thought they were metal cables, but they're just rope. Looks like a spider web. Together they paraded back to the garage. They played pin the tail on the Yeti. They made snow trucks. They had snow battles. I guess it's a story walk for children. Oh, this is the end of the cement path. Well, not the end. It just curves back around to the parking lot. So I guess it doesn't go all the way around. So it says permits are required for groups over 24 people. I think that's the end of the park, perhaps. Oh, the barbed wire fence. There's a small trail back here. I don't think it's a long trail because the barbed wire fence is right there. Oh, you just follow the barbed wire? We're just taking a walk through the shrubs. Not really a trail, I don't think. There is a trail, but it's on the other side of the fence. Ooh, ooh. We found a dirt path. Kind of goes on the other side of the park. Wow, that's a massive one. Oh, yeah. We're at the soccer field. That's where we were over there. We should have taken the right because the cement trail continues around the park over here. Oh, there it is. Back on it. That was a nice little detour, though. Right, Memo? Number two, the little snowplow loved his job on the mighty mountain road crew. All year long, he helped the other trucks with their digging, pulling, and lifting. What you doing, Mama? All right, we made it back up to the front parking area. Teddy bear cactus or whatever they are on the biggest uh, tree. Oh, well, the teddy bear cactus? I think that's just another form of choya. Well, the park is... Definitely not laid out for hiking or walking your dog. It's more a sports park, but I mean, we made it work. And the doggy's got a little bit of exercise. Did you enjoy it, Momo? Huh? <laughs> we thought it dead end right there where the ball field is, but there is a path that comes through that we could have taken. Oh well. Oh, what was that? Backfire! Ooh, horsies! <laughs> so we come to a local gas station. We're gonna grab some propane. It's $3.99 a gallon. The last place was $3.30, so it's a little more expensive here. But one of my friends said they just paid for something, so $3.99 is okay with me. Well, something's burning. What are they doing? Maybe they're doing a control burn. Oh, control burn. I was like, well, that's just weird. Those are total spots. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, God. Hope nothing near our rig is burning, but. No, it's too green. Yeah, they're just doing little controlled spot burns there. It's weird. They're just doing yeah. a pile brush burning, like certain s spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's weird. But I'm glad nothing's burning, like the rigs or anything like that. But, um,. I did fill up. Well, I wouldn't say fill up. He only filled it up to four gallons. It's, I think, a, like a seven-gallon tank, seven or eight-gallon tank. But he's like, oh, I'm just putting four in. And I was like, okay. I didn't argue with him, so. But it ended up being like about 18 bucks, a little less. So we're still in the green. Oh, yeah, we're good. I don't have to change that tank out just yet. Three burn piles. Well, maybe four. There's two there, one here, and it seems like there's one back there. At least the wind is blowing away from us and not right at the rigs. That wouldn't be pleasant. 
for a little pile. Oh, they have multiple. Yeah, it's just like little brush piles. There's multiple. They're, actually, I thought this was just one big one, but it's one, two, three, four, five. But there's been a lot of rain the last two days, so that's probably why they're doing it now. Are you staring at Kellogg and his bully stick? You already had one. A couple nurseries yesterday, and also I grabbed some plants from Walmart. I got three climbing roses. Then I want to go ahead and get in some pots. Let me give you a look-see to what we saw there at the nursery. We're just taking a look at one of the local nurseries here. They've got a lot of plants. And lovely pots. So many plants. Oh, that's that bottled one. That's the fairy duster. Yeah, I need one of these at their property. This would be so cool. It's an awesome nursery. Aww. Oh, it's just a little sitting area up here. You want to sit on the bench up up? Go ahead, up up. Good girl. You sit here and relax. Enjoy the little pond. Yes, it's nice, isn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> wow, they really have it done well here. So pretty. Wish we could grow palms. I'm not sure how cold hardy palms are though. These look like they've been here for a minute. Well, that's cool how they have this bush spalliated like a tree. Yeah, there's a lot of plants here that wouldn't do well in zone 6B. But it's still cool to look at. Uh-oh, Jeff found a sale. <laughs> Holy cow. This nursery is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Yeesh. Goes way down there. And then all the way to the front up here. Look, it's a row of Christmas trees. These are the Mondell or Goldwater Pines. Beautiful. They're hardy to about zero degrees, so they're right there on the border because sometimes we can get down to negative 10. I think this year it's got down to negative two, so they probably wouldn't survive. Unless I could find a microclimate on the property that doesn't get that cold. What is it? It's mastic tree. Oh, mastic tree. What is it, Kellogg? Don't be on the trees and bushes. I know how you are. Oh, uh, something's already in bloom. What is this, a plum tree? It looks plumish. See, purple leaf, yeah, plum tree. Oh, such pretty flowers. I planted a plum on the property. Yeah, here's a hardy white oleander. It's up to 20 feet, but it's only good to down to 15 degrees. This is what I'm looking for, something that fruits. And this is the Indian laurel fig tree, but uh, it's only hardy to 25 degrees. I have two varieties of figs on the property now, the Chicago and... I think it's the Black Mission, and it's right there on the cusp too. So I was just testing those out and seeing if they worked. Oh, that looks like more fig trees there. What is it? Let's see. It's the Figomenal Dwarf Fig. Huh. Yeah, that one's right there at the cuffs too. I think it's uh, down to zero degrees, so that's pretty. Got a lot of metal sculptures. Oh, I want to see your peacock. Cock, cock. Those are cool. I like those. And only 70 bucks. <laughs> Did you find the edible garden, Momo? They've got a fig, cilantro, rosemary, uh, some kind of squash back there. That looks like Chinese lettuce, beetroot, kale. What is that? It's some kind of pepper. That's weird. 
Yeah, it's some kind of pepper. Strawberry and basil. Look how pretty that is when it's flowering. Citronella. Anybody have mosquitoes? <laughs> it's kind of what I got, that trumpet vine. But my flowers are yellow. It's the dormant plant that I bought. A lot of edibles. Ooh, what's that one? Variegated. Is that basil or sage? Oh, it's sage. Tricolor. Nice. Oh, it's got purple in it, too. Oh, they got a variegated golden lemon thyme. Never heard of this plant before. Or this herb. It's a rue. Perfect for beds, borders, and containers. Small amount may be used to give an unusual musky, I'm not sure if that's good, flavor to cream cheese, egg, and fish dishes. Mm. Oh, they even have marjoram. Oh, they got a lot of herbs. I'll have to come back and get some. Sugar plant. Do they mean stevia? Oh, yeah, it's just stevia. That's where they just don't call it stevia. Well, it looks like it's in bloom. We should probably cut those back. This plant's not good if it goes into bloom. So this is like nursery row. We found another nursery, right? A couple of blocks down. Definitely not as big as the other one. But they have a lot of color. Ooh, beautiful. Freesha. Oh, look at They've got heavenly bamboo. In zone 6 to 10. That would work. It doesn't really look like the normal bamboo though. Oh, trumpet vine. That's the what we just saw, but this one's the pink variety. Let's see what's the growing zone. Yeah, this one's 80 bucks. I paid 15 for mine because it was it went dormant, so they were just selling them off for 70% off. Doesn't say the zone. Oh yeah, it does. Oh, 9 to 11. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Oh, star jasmine. Such a sweet smelling flower. But that's zones 8 to 11. I can't grow that. Might be a cold hardy variety out there. Wow, look at these beautiful purple flowers. It's a hibiscus. It's uh, only good down to 30 degrees. So that would die right off. Anybody need any cactus? <laughs> we got a wide variety here. Hmm. A what? The yeah, the bougainvillea, but it's only good through like, like 10, I think. Zone 10 to 11. They don't survive in the cold. Let's see. Yeah, 10 to 11. I just spotted something. Did they turn this lantana into a tree? And that is a lantana. Look at the blooms. That's the pink and yellow variety. Wow. This must be old. Look how huge that stock is there. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I didn't know it produced berries. There's some signs of old wrinkly berries. Wow. Cool. At the Hong Kong orchid tree. That sounds interesting. It's weird. They don't have anything on the front to show if it blooms or anything. Hmm. Well, I know that leaf right there. Magnolia. We used to have this back in South Carolina. Except uh, most of ours had uh, like a dark brown or kind of a, a brown undercoating under the leaf. This one has a little bit. This is the Bracken Brown Beauty. Oh, 120 bucks. Let's see what the growing zone. Oh, it would work. Zones five to nine. Wow down to a negative 20. Look at all the citrus trees. <laughs> oh wait, they have fruit on them? Oh wow, that looks like a grapefruit. There's a tangerine right there and it's got a fruit on it. Holy crap. Look how much fruit's on that one. I'll just take that and hook it to the back of my RV. See, yeah, it is a grapefruit. Ruby red. Awesome. Wow, there's a lot of fruit. It's doing well in that pot there. Although, it seems like it's struggling a bit because there's. It's turning 
leaves and the leaves seem like they're falling off. What? Oh, Holy cow, I thought my one lemon was awesome. It's got like 30 lemons on it. It has some kind of deficiency though, or it's overwatering. So look, the veins are starting to turn yellow. That's usually a sign of overwatering or something. So it says it's a Lisbon lemon tree. An even smaller one. Fruit. Holy cow. That's as big as mine. Oh, that's grapefruit though. Look at that fruit on there. It's as big as my hand. What is that, a kumquat? Limequat. Limequat. Oh. I thought it looked kind of familiar, but... That's, that's probably funny. Oh, so it's... That's weird. So it has, um... Looks like limes and a kumquat mix. Tons of grapevines. And then more figs. Excel fig. It's the growing zone for this one. No, it doesn't say. I think 100 hours below 45 degrees. Self fruitful. Some golden apple trees. Ooh, what's this in bloom? It's an apple too. Let's see. Which one is this? This is the pink lady. Oh, awesome. I love a pink lady. I don't have a pink lady. See, it doesn't say the um, growing zone. But apples usually do well in colder climates. It says three to four hundred hours below 45 degrees. And Santa Rosa plum. Holy cow. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Angel's Trumpet. Angel's Trumpet. It's the Bergmanzia. Wow, 170 bucks. Anybody need any aloe? They gotcha. Okay, the last spot we're going to go to is the greenhouse. A lot of neat plants here. Oh, these look like little fruit bushes. <laughs> oh, they're peaches. Huh. Oh, it's a miniature peach. Look at they have miniature peaches over here. That is too cool. It's like in a shrub form. All the shrub um, peaches. Yeah, um, blackberries. Oh, triple crown, triple crowned blackberries. And that's a raspberry. Is it thornless? This is. Hmm. I know. I bought some raspberries, but they didn't do well, so. I bought a replacement. Hopefully it takes. Blackberries? Mm. Blueberries. Our soil back at home is very neutral, so I have to acidify the soil if I want to grow blueberries. Or I can just grow it in a container. Wow, they put a lot of edibles in here. I think it's all edibles. Ooh, look at avocado. Those definitely aren't hardy in our zone. Yeah, protect below 28 degrees. Peppers, peppers, and more peppers. Oh, look, they've got kale. All different kind of stuff. Spinach. Broccoli. That's in bloom. Look how beautiful that is. Just more edibles. Okay. At least I know they're here. And I can always come back. They're not old, they're not, but... I think that's how much it was over there too, four ninety nine. dollars the other one. Here's that same herb over there, the rue. They just look a lot healthier than some of the stuff. Yeah, at the other place, like Home Depot or the box yeah. stores. So while my free pepper plants ended up getting aphids, I had to cut them back. It looks like one is starting to bounce back, but most of them generally are just done. So I'm probably going to pull these plants and use these three pots for the roses. These are the three roses that I got. All of them are climbing, which is awesome because I want some climbers. I've got one back at home. This one is the CL America, it's a pink rose. Then this one is a CL Joseph's coat, which is a yellow rose. Look how unusual that looks, that's beautiful. 
It's not that typical looking rose. And then I got the Proud Land Red Rose. It's a hybrid tea. And this one's going to go in the sitting area by my rig because that's done in all red. I thought that would be beautiful there. So let's get them in pots so I can take care of them throughout the season until I get them planted. You say you're getting old, getting old, but what do you know about what's to come? Cause what the future holds, future holds, nobody knows till the race is all won. So if you're wondering what's the point, what's the point of anything at all? It's to live your life, live your life, live it right now, cause you only get One of the peppers had a self-watering pot and I didn't want to waste that on a rose because they don't really need it. I went ahead and put this candy tuff in there. I think it looks much better because the pot it was in was beige and kind of matches the holder it's in. The herbs are looking good. And I collected some rainwater. I'm going to use this on the roses. Water the roses in. Yeah, I'm gonna like this much better. Like I said last season, I didn't do this and all of my plants suffered. I think only two uh, actually lived out of the plus 10 that I bought. This way I can keep them watered and keep an eye on them. That one's looking a bit dried out. I didn't water you. I wasn't really worried about getting rid of the tomatoes and the peppers because I got them free anyways from Lowe's when that lady didn't want them and she'd bought that container that already had all the plants in them. But yeah, they just got infested. And it's weird, those were really the only ones that got bothered by the aphids. Well, actually the eggplant from back home that I'm overwintering got aphids, but I cut it all back. As you can see, it has a new flush of leaves that's coming about. And the tomato I cut back. It still has two tomatoes on there. And these peppers from the property actually got cut back, but as you can see, they're starting to put on leaves again. So yeah, I'm excited. And look, my kiwi vine is starting to get leaves. This is gonna get huge, but I have a perfect spot for it back home. Another thing that's starting to leaf out is the forsythia. And this rosemary that's going back home, that's cold tolerant, it's looking really good. Oh look at horsies, that's awesome. I wanted to show you the mint basket. The sweet mint is starting to take off there. It's hanging over the side. Got pansies planted along with it. And this is the variegated pineapple mint. It's still small, but I planted this later. Well, excuse me, mister, did you steal my seat, huh? You chair thief, you. Is it comfy? Is it comfy? Is it comfy? Mm -hmm. Is it comfy? Yeah. Yes. No licky hands. I got dirty hands. I've been gardening. Stop it. <laughs> I brought the cherry hat tomato in. It's just getting a little chilly at night, but I think I'm going to take it outside. The lettuce area is doing well. Look how big everything's getting. Yay. So Jeff just made some fresh bread. Look how good that looks. Ooh, and it's still warm. Mmm. Looks really good. How does it taste? It's good. I haven't put any butter on it. No butter? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, it smells yummy and looks yummy, so I'm going to cut me a uh, slice. Oh, it's kind of hard to cut. How the heck did you cut it? Oh. Wow. I have a bread knife, but... Oh, I have an electric bread knife. That would probably made it, made it easier. Nothing like fresh baked bread with butter. Ooh. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm, smells good. I don't really smell of it, no smell of vision, yeah. Hold on, I'm just gonna take a little bite. What kind of bread is it? This is just artesian? A plain white bread. Well, it's artesian. It's artesian, yeah. Flour, yeah. Mmm. That's really good. I need some butter. Mm -hmm. mm. So good. Mm -hmm. What are y'all staring at? Mm hmm, Mumu. And Mumu was like, what? You want some bread, Mumu? Huh? You want a piece <laughs> of bread? You want some bread? Huh? I can tempt you with some bread. Here, I'm not giving you a piece of butter on it, mm. but I'll give you a little nibble of this. Here, you want to try that? Mmm. No? Get, get. How about that? See, I'll throw it on the ground, she'll probably attack it. Get, Kellogg. Mm -hmm. Moon was like, I'm not a bird. But Kellogg ate it. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Mm. You gonna eat it, Momo? Or just let it, is it too warm for you? Okay. Okay, it's got some melted butter on there. Mmm. You did a good job. Good job. <laughs> mm. It's all good. Okay, she ate the other piece, but we're going to try the piece with the uh, butter. You want that? <laughs> oh, uh oh. See, it's got the butter on it, and you're just like, nyah, 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 nyah. Uh huh. She's like, well, I need butter too. Mm -hmm. You want a little piece of butter on it, Kellogg? <laughs> Alright, last one, Mumu. A little bit of butter. Yum, 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 yum. She likes it much better with butter. So, Jeff used to, you said you used to make bread all the time? Yeah, just about every week. Oh, yeah, so. Mmm, it's really good. Mmm, so good with the butter. Mmm, the crunchy crust. Mmm. Somewhere between 50 and 60 cents to make a loaf of bread. That's not bad. So I'm trying some with strawberry jam, organic strawberry jam and some butter. That's really good right there. Mm.